Everyone's live. We're good. All right, cool. Thanks for bearing with us, guys. We had a little bit of uh, you know a couple minutes of technical difficulties there, but we're uh, we're back. Uh, thank you for joining us for another European Watch Company Horological Happy Hour. I'm Justin, and sitting next to me tonight, uh, you will. If you've been with us before, you'll know that this is not Rob next to me. Uh, Rob couldn't be with us, so I went ahead and recruited our colleague, Zach. So, Zach, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Anytime. And we are, sorry, guys, uh, we have people running around fixing, uh, fixing connections and everything, but we're, uh, we're good. So, anyways, for our end of the year kind of, you know, wrap up um, happy hour here. Simple. We decided to pick out a bunch of different price points and pick our favorite watch from that category. So we went ahead. Yeah, please mute guys. Uh, we went ahead and we we're gonna do under five k. We're doing five, we're doing five, five to ten k. Craig, you're killing me. Producer Craig, come on. Sorry guys. Okay, we're good now. All right, awesome. Anyways, turn the camera on. <laughs> we're doing we're doing under five k. We're going to do 5 to 10, 10 to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 100, and 100K and above. So we have six different categories. Zach and I both chose one watch from each category. Um, we're going to tell each other why you're, we're right, we're wrong, whatever. If you guys have ideas, if you guys have opinions, definitely jump into the chat and let us know. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up now. So I have it over here. Um, I spent the the whole day working on this list. <laughs> Didn't do anything else. I love it. Uh, yeah, so it's whatever. Busy time of year, uh, but we have a lot of really good stuff on the table. A lot of good stuff in stock right now. Um, so hopefully we uh, we hit some of the things that, that you guys would choose as well. So, um, well, usually we start off by, by talking about what we're, uh, what we're drinking uh, for this happy hour. Zachary, I see you went with a, uh, a nice sparkling San Pellegrino. Lovely, lovely. I went with a steaming hot cup of coffee at 5.07 p.m. because it's been a long day and a long week, but we made it. So um, anyways, let's get started. Zach, what is your pick for um, under 5K? So I chose, are we going to get the camera ready here? Cool. cool. Yep. I chose the Zenith Revival okay. Chronograph. Nice. So big theme in my list is sort of value. Mm -hmm. So for this one here, personally, I think the movement's bulletproof. Yep. Our watchmaker, Dan, stands behind the brand and the movement thinks they're great. Um, kind of just love the dial on this one. Yeah, it's such it's got such a nice vintage. I mean, obviously, it's called the Revival. It's a, you know, vintage-inspired piece from, what, the late 60s, early 70s, I believe? Something like that. Yep. I've, I've actually seen the vintage references, mm -hmm. and it's spot on. Yeah, they're super cool. such a good job. Yeah. Um, Awesome movement, case finishing is just really stellar on these. Yeah, I mean you have the you have the El Primero, obviously, which you know speaks for itself. You don't really need to say much much else about that. Um, so just so I know, guys, what do we got going on right now? It wasn't live on YouTube. Okay, we weren't live on YouTube. That's okay. Anyways, glad that Instagram is with us. Uh, so yeah, so I mean, sub five K, tough to beat. Um, you know, steel. Kind of you have that like panda feel, obviously. Yeah, panda feel. And then you have that really distinctive ladder bracelet as well, which you know no one else does that. Um, if you got a hairy wrist, it doesn't. It's it could be a little bit a little bit too much, but it's super cool. But you're also getting just an amazing complication as well. Mm -hmm. I think you know getting a chronograph. Yep. Um, you know, under that five thousand dollar price point or yep. around that five thousand dollar price point is super impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not easy to do. Um, fake watch Busta says unpopular opinion. Is there any other watch worth buying under five K except Tudor if you really compare head to head? And just wait, I got my, my pick coming up. I think it's very easy. I mean, I took the easy way out and I just went Tudor. Um, you know, and it's it's tough to argue against, you know sub 5k you know um doing any better i think zach chose really well it's you're really you kind of really have tudor some zenith and and some omega you know what i mean for, IWCs. For, and iwc as well yeah, yeah. For, for pieces that we sell um you know and tudor across the board you know you have uh the black bag of 58 now you have the the um the 54 which is incredible you know all different colors you know you have all different um variants and everything um so yeah it's tough to beat but like i said zach i think that if you're gonna go something other than tutor 
I think I'd probably go that direction as mm -hmm. well because it's just a little bit more interesting than IWC. What's up? Say hello to YouTube. And what YouTube. Doing? Hi. Sorry. We uh, we missed you there. We uh, again a little bit of a technical difficulty for, from the onset here. But um, anyways, just to recap real quick, we are doing our our favorite watches that we currently have in stock at different price points. So again, that's five k and under, five to ten, ten to twenty five, twenty five to fifty, fifty to one hundred, and one hundred and above. So. YouTube, if you have ideas, if you have uh, comments, uh, tell us we're right, tell us we're wrong, tell us what you would pick. So, um, Zach chose the Zenith Revival, uh, Chronograph, El Primero, just super bulletproof, you know, lots of vintage vibe for the money. Um, and kind of going along that same, um, in that same vein, I, I chose um, the somewhat new Tudor Pelagos FXD. Um, yeah. So, I mean, again, you know, inspired by, you know, those, those Marine Nationale, um, you know, Tudor snowflakes from, from back in the seventies, which, you know, uh, I, I, I kind of have a, a soft spot for any, any tool watch with a really good story. Um, so, you know, this kind of fits the bill. Um, so for a piece that I'm just looking right now, the MSRP is just under $4,400. We're listing for 4250 Um, you know, again, just a ton of watch for the money. You know, it's super capable. Um, I'm trying to see, yeah. I mean, the 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 water resistance is 200 meters. Like, regardless, any any watch that I buy, it's never going you know in the water in the water with me or or yeah. you know to depth at all. But you know, it's just titanium case. You know, I actually really love the the Velcro kind of NATO you know fabric strap. Um, just super utilitarian and. You know the 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 Pelagos on the bracelet isn't isn't necessarily my thing, but for whatever no. reason, I don't know why honestly either. It's just mm -hmm. I don't get on Robert or strap much better. And I, I, I the this NATO is probably my favorite option. Uh, it's just a little bit different, a little bit distinctive. Um, Bezel action is kind of unbeatable. Yeah, give it actually like a nice click uh, couple for the uh, for the camera if you can. It, it's. Like even almost more so than Rolex, it's so notchy. It, I know. In like the best way possible, you get like such good feedback from it. it. It's yeah, it's amazing. I think yeah, I think it's honestly better than Rolex. Controversial. Uh, better. Yeah. The bezel action. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't disagree. Yeah. I don't know. That is actually a hot take. I'm not sure. Um, George Prony is asking what the dimensions are on the Zenith. Let me look real quick for you, George, because I don't know if it's it's on the smaller side, but the case is it's it's a very funky kind of geometric, you know, uh, shaped case. It's like a it's kind of a it wears like a kind of like a thirty seven mil oyster case. Well, so the actual dimensions are thirty seven, and it's thirteen mil thick. It's just it's it's longer. Than than you would expect for a 37 mil case because it has those like super kind of angular trapezoidal lugs or whatever. Um, but it's the right size. It wears really nicely. Um, do you want to just switch real quick, David, so we can, so YouTube can see. Yeah. Pull it down a little bit, Zach, so you can kind of get a little perspective, but there you go. Yeah. I mean, great, great piece. Just a very well proportioned yep. watch. Yep. Super, super nice. So, uh, let's see, Zach, lots of love for you on here, buddy. Jordan Krause, Karn, all the boys, Jay. all the boys. <laughs> You're bringing them, bringing them in. I'm likely it. I my love fiance. Was... <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. No, we'll see. She's definitely. Oh, nice. I love it. All right, cool. Nice. Check it. All right. So, uh, that is the 5k and under, uh, I like mine better. Justin. All right. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't bring you I didn't bring you here for your opinion, my friend. That's fine. I know you don't care. Uh, so 5k and under again, tough to do any better don't than, be than either a, a Zenith or a Tudor. Um, you know, uh, I would take that Tudor over pretty much any Seamaster, uh, in the, the 5k and under Agreed. range. Um, you know, so again, not, not Those a whole lot. Hips. Oh my God. I love them. It's so I would love if they did kind of um, a more vintagey uh, tone on that on that loom. Like, give me here. I got a clock for right here. One second. Um, you know, if they if they gave me like a little bit of like a tritium fade action on that, I think that would be absolutely amazing. You know, to really kind of uh, you know like mimic those those vintage yeah. um, snowflake models. But again, just super super clean. Super. Well, what I like about this one too is it kind of doesn't have that vintage feel to it okay like this is like a modern tool yeah. watch yeah you know what i mean it, it is i yeah. mean 
when you think about, you know, what those marine nationales and, and those old, you know, uh, snowflakes were, they were they were pure tool watches. Nobody was buying them to like to flex or, you know, to show off or anything. They, they bought them because of their capabilities. Mm. So, you know, you're right. This is, this is basically the modern interpretation, you know, um, kind of of, of that, of that whole ethos. So the, yeah, Tudor, Tudor's tough to beat right now. They did a really nice job. Agreed. Oh, Hannah, Hannah's here. Whoa. Hello, Hannah. <laughs> All right. Um, next up, we are going to go the 5 to 10K uh, category. What um, what are you going with there, Zach? So I, I show, it's funny. I actually had a client come in today looking for this exact watch, albeit with a silver dial. I chose the JLC, GG Le Coult. <laughs> um, this is the Ultra Thin Moon. Yep. Just a beautiful watch i think the case wears very elegantly sort of got this like understated class to it totally um and again a big theme of mine is is just overall just value yeah and we talked about it a million times you know uh david you want to check the audio levels i think we're getting some crazy clipping right now um the you know jlc value for money i don't think you can do Can't any any better like, like we said you know tutor under 5k you're really very hard to beat but overall value for money jlc is like top of the heap you know i mean of course whether it's a simple um you know calatrava style the moon phase like this or you know even like the perpetual that we've talked about the steel perpetuals for you know in like the 20k range or yeah. actually less you know it's, totally it's beyond so, I mean, they, yeah yeah they, exactly watchmaking is just staggered i mean they're they are the watchmakers watchmaker so you know you're right it's just it's it's a ton of value this one it looks like we had it listed for 8250 or we do have it listed for 8250 so yeah i mean under 10k you get a um a 39 mil calatrava-esque kind of case you know in steel with yeah there you go show off you also those. get the see-through case back you yep. have the rose gold rotor solid finish albeit probably not by hand right but at, at you know, this 80 price point, point, who I mean, cares you kind of can't be this movement yeah. complications overall proportions and just execution mm -hmm. unbeatable yeah gorgeous and we have the silver dial as well we actually had that in here first i'm glad you swapped it out for the black i think the the silver is really nice but for for whatever reason, the black dial just feels like a pops. A different, yeah, it pops. It yeah. feels much more elegant than the silver dial. The blue of the of the moon disc, just it's weird, but I think it looks much better against the black than it does Agreed. the silver. And now you know the white, um, the white printing and everything. I just I really like that piece. You also just don't see black dial JLC as often. They do kind of have that like brushed sort of silver. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. yeah. The majority, you know, like again, the perpetual, you'll get it in, you know, the black dial, and I much prefer the black over the over the silver. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, not a ton of more simple um black dial JLCs mm. and steel. Um yeah, they're 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 really, really, really great. What'd you pick, Jess? I'm trying to remember, Zach. What did I go with? I went with Oh, I went with with the Rolex Explorer 2 16750. Um, so, sorry, 16570. Um, so, Explorer 2s, I have like a, a huge soft spot for as well. Um, I, this was like, that was actually my first Rolex um, about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago now. Um, and I actually still kind of miss it. You know, the, mm -hmm. it's, I don't even know what it is about it. I don't know if it's that fixed bezel um, or, I don't know. It's, it's just a, it's, it's, it's like an inherently capable watch, you know, GMT, um, you know, this one has the gorgeous tritium loom, which I love these, these get like a really nice fade to them over time. And I really like this era of Rolex. So nineties Rolex, you know, up till when they switched over to super Luminova, the, before they went to the maxi cases, before they went to, you know, um, you know, just the oversized dials and everything, these just have like a really kind of vintage feel but you still get the the modern internals yeah. Yeah. and i love it, it's funny like if you're used to wearing you know a modern sub or something then you put one of these on it's going to feel like flimsy on your wrist sure because the clasp is just like punt not punched but essentially punched stainless steel as opposed to you know a big blocky milled piece of metal um so it feels almost like a tin can and it's like really charming actually i love it 
Um, yeah, it's still like so snappy yeah. and like delicious. Yeah, views, yeah. absolutely. And these two, like this one's gorgeous. The the bezel is perfect on this one. You'll you'll see some of these that have you know the enamel has worn away or it's been polished a bunch of times. You can tell be, just because you know the 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 bezel gives it all away like immediately. Mm -hmm. But this one's super nice. You know, this has got all the enamel intact. This you know, like I said, has that tritium loom. Just super simple, super straightforward. And like when I had this, this was, that was my only watch. And I wore it with a suit. I wore it, you know, shorts and a t-shirt. Like it's, it's awesome. And I lit, like, I actually do still miss it. I, I have, you know, pieces that I love now, mm -hmm. but that is the one piece that I've traded that I actually am like really, I probably will end up owning another one at some point. For sure. I mean, the beauty of the pre-maxi case is that you can kind of wear it in a dressier set. Yeah. Right. It's a super thin watch. Right. They wear very elegantly, honestly. I, I had a five-digit sub, and I miss it. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, it's the, the same feel. Um, so this one, I just want to get the details. Also, another it. good value prop. Yeah, well, like, 80, if you look 80, at the 80, Rolex. $8,100 on, on it, you know? You're getting a GMT. Right. So 3186, five? No, right? it's earlier, yeah, 3185 movement. This Because this one is from, this one's actually from 2005. It's a, Oh, no, the, no, sorry, this is a different one. Regardless, it's still, you know, in the in the 8K range, 8 to eight to 10K is usually where you'll see them. Awesome. Um, yeah, amazing. And, but like you said, so at, in like, you know, say, say 8 to 9, 10K, whatever, you know, you can, you can buy this or you could go find like a date just or something, mm. you know, a more modern date just. There aren't, it, it, it punches above its weight class, essentially, you know, at that price. Totally um great. So I, I love it. Um, I'm a huge, huge fan of, of the older Explorer 2s. Um, uh, where are we going next, Zachary? Next. So that's the, the ten to $25,000 range. That's where we're moving to next. So I chose the Patek Philippe 5134 Rose. Nice. Is that rose or yellow? I think it's yellow. Is it yellow? I think so. I put rose on my list. Let me look. If it's yellow, no worries. Take a look. Yeah, we had had a rose, but it's sold. Got it. So we that is the yellow. And it's interesting. You'll see um, this model had a couple different dial variants. So you have the this one, which has you know the Arabic numerals all the way around, and then you which have, I pre I prefer. I prefer as well. Yeah, because yeah, we have another J in stock. You know, yellow gold in stock right now that has stick markers, and I believe it has. Arabics at like 12, you know, at the quarter hours or something. And it's just, it's not the same. It's too cluttered on the, the dial is too cluttered. Um, I always go well. for Arabics. I think it's an opportunity for a brand to really kind of show their typefaces and design. Sure. So to me, that's kind of why I'm drawn to this one. Okay. And I also like it because you get the see-through case back. Which is actually worth it on, on a piece of this Which caliber, exactly you know? We wear that. Yeah. This is a 215. With a mod module, or I'm not. We're missing Rob. Rob. Rob is usually our movement guy. Wow, Zach, good job. Two fifteen PS. Yeah, which is actually the same as what is in the thirty nine nineteen. That's correct. Right. Yep. Which you, I was gonna say, which you wear every day, basically. Yeah. Um, and you're right. Yes, with just with a with a travel time module on there. So show off show off how the travel time on this works. Sure. You know, similar to you know like a um, a modern uh, fifty one sixty four travel time Aquanaut. You know, um, or even you know kind of similar to like the fifty two twenty four. Um, you know the 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 Pilot travel time. Paddock's travel times are so easy. So easy. just with you know with 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 the actuators on the on the left side of the case there like you can go forward you can go backwards you know no matter which direction you're traveling you you know hop off the plane or whatever and you move it forward a few hours move it back a few hours and it's just like it's simple it's easy you know you have that 24 hour dial up at up at 12 o'clock and then the running seconds at six so just again like super easy it's still super classy this is an undervalued reference in my Agreed. opinion as well totally you know it's great. it's this one is from I think it's mid 2000s, 03. And that era of Paddock is kind of, you know, it's the, the design language is a little bit dated, but not not in a bad way, in my opinion. No. You know, it, it's definitely like of a time. Um, you can definitely look at that and pick out, oh, that, that's from, you know, the early 2000s or whatever, just from the way it is kind of laid out and, you know, the, the, the shape of the case and whatnot. But so I love the shape of the case. I personally, and I've said this before, it honestly kind of gives me Aquanaut vibes. 
I think that the the, the, the pushers, but also you get like kind of this subtle crown guard. Yeah. Um, it kind of yeah. has like this, I don't know, just kind of looks like, like, it's a very sporty case. I mean, you have like that mm. big bezel, um, you know, when comparing it to like a Calatrava yep. or something like that. Yeah, it's much thicker. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's almost like a really good everyday manual wind bag. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting, you know, it's a manual wine travel time, which, you know, I don't know, I think I, I would prefer to have an automatic, sure. um, but you really, I mean, again, like, I'm splitting hairs here, I'm, I'm complaining that it's a manual, not a not an automatic paddock movement, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's it's an amazing piece. Um, and I feel like usually with manual wine, mm -hmm. you don't get the see-through case back, especially in this era. Yeah, not, a, I mean, a lot, uh, a lot of times you don't, you know, especially at that price point, too, you know, paddock... Um, Paddock does, you know, on a lot of their college, on, you know, many of their college travels. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, especially your, like you said, that era, um, mm -hmm. I don't think you saw it as much as we do now. So yeah, it's, it's unique. It's, I like it. it. It's interesting that, that for me, that, that, that's almost like a thinking man's choice. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's, mm -hmm. it's not obvious. It's not. Call me a thinking man. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to give you a little bit of a compliment there. Zach. <laughs> <laughs> but no, really like it's, it's again, it's an overlooked underappreciated reference and it's, it's it, again. It's another watch, like you said. You know, you're you're focusing on or just kind of happen to be focusing on value. It you know it gives it punches way above its weight class. Exactly. So good good piece. Um, Takes a lot of boxes. Social media dialects asks, what watch would you choose going from beach day to night out? Mm. Beach That's day to night. So we talked uh, social media. Oh, so sorry, social media. Alex helps if I can read, huh? Uh, uh, Alex. Trying to think here. Like, are we talking like we're going, we're, we're, you know, in South Beach in Miami and then we're going to a club afterwards? Or like, are we just like going so to a like nice hoop, dinner? Hoopla, or... I mean, you could just keep the hoopla <laughs> on, honestly. So, but, honestly, uh, like, I, I really think Paddock Aquanaut, yeah. it, you can't beat it. Like, the number of times where I've, you know, my wife and I have gone away somewhere, you know, we've been on the beach and like at like a nice restaurant or something, I looked around and it's like a bunch of old dudes wearing like their 5066s or 5065s or, you know, even like a 5167. It's mm -hmm. just, you do anything with it. It looks better when you don't, when you're not precious with it, and you kind of just like beat it up and beat it up. You know, act like you don't care, and you're just only cool about it. Beat up. Hell yeah, yeah. it's the best. Yeah. It's the best. Um, sorry, going for a little more coffee. All right, Alex, tell us what tell us what you think, man. Like, what is what is your pick? Um, Rob, what's up, buddy? Thank you for joining. You gotta come on. Give us give us something to work with in the chat here, my friend. You gotta. Uh, we're missing you. We're, yeah, Rob's here. <laughs> um, so my pick for what is my pick here? Oh, oh, okay. So for this category, which of course, shocking, I went with a Cartier. Um, Mr. Cartier over here. Yeah, we've talked about. I think we actually talked about this possibly last week. Show that one off. So this is the tank of the dual time. Yeah, right. this is the dual time. We talked about it last week for the dual time episode or the travel time episode. So, you know, again, like I'm a, I love Cartier. I really like their more kind of, you know, funky, you know, more creative designs. This is pretty straightforward for them beyond the the dual time um, complication. You know, just a standard tank V case, you know, with those four, um, you know, very rectangular, the four exposed screws, you know, holding the bezel on. Don't they call this like a doctor's watch or something like that? No. A doctor's watch? Yeah. In what way? Like what? Referring to what? I don't know. Some of the, like older Rolex princes or something like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to look into that. If anybody knows, let us know. Um, but show off that movement as well. Um, sure. Just here, I'm going to pull up the details. Again, I know we talked about this recently, but just, you know, it, it's just funky. Like, it, I love non-round watches, and, you know, you're fairly limited when it comes to, um, you know, watches that, that kind of don't conform to the, 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 the norm. Um, so manual wind, um, you know, in-house Cartier movement, um, you set both, um, you know, the dual time and everything through that single crown. That's, you know, that's, that's all you get. Um, but it just wears really nicely. It's the right size. It sits nicely on the wrist. Um, I love the cabaret. We didn't have one right yeah. now, or that would have been my bad for this. That is an amazing one. It's insane. And honestly, I love when you look at a non-round watch and it has a it doesn't just have a round movement with a space. Yeah, I was just gonna that say that. That drives me crazy when you pop, either pop a case back and you have a tiny movement in a big case, or mm -hmm. you know, 
whatever. Like here, you have a square movement. That was designed for, for this case. case. And very similar yep. to the cabaret. You know, it's designed for this piece. Um, and it just, it shows the brand's commitment to, mm -hmm. to their design. Like they didn't just create this cool design and then, and then do anything, cat. What's up? Uh, and then, and then just like pop whatever they had in the in the case, just to kind of like push it out the door. So, you know, Cartier Cartier is interesting, where they have incredible pieces and then they have garbage pieces. Like, and I, obviously, you know, whatever. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a pass for the garbage ones because it allows them to make these like crazy esoteric, you know, funky designs that that I absolutely love. But this is one of the good ones for sure. Um, so this is also i want to say this was a this yeah this is part of the Privé collection um so you know dead giveaway when you look at the dial those when you look at um a cartier like this with a guilloche dial if you look very closely at the center we might not be able to show it but you would get a central rosette um around the hands there you go oh perfect yeah so you see how the the guilloche kind of radiates out from from the pivots um, and you have that rosette pattern right around the pivot. So that's a dead giveaway that this is a, um, a piece from the Privé collection. But also the Paris on the dial. And also the Paris, exactly. Yeah. You only get Cartier Paris on Privé pieces or vintage pieces. Um, so, yeah, I love this. It, the, longer, the longer it sits in our inventory, the, the harder and harder it gets not to, not to pick it up for myself because I absolutely love it. Um, this one we have listed for $23.9. Um, and again, it's just a ton of money. Money. It's a ton of watch for the money. Like Agreed. it's, yeah. I don't even know what else to say about it. It's just a really, really sharp, unusual piece that just speaks to me for a whole, a whole host of different reasons. So, um, let me see. What else we got anything going on in the chat? Zach, um, um, producer Craig, anything going on over on the, uh, on the YouTube? Um, we had some on Instagram. Yeah, I'm going back to that stuff now. Trevor Cobb, yeah, you're right. That's what I was thinking as well. So Trevor said that the pulsation dials were were what it's termed as doctor's watches. You'll mm -hmm. see vintage pieces with those pulsometer scales on there, which were used for taking people's pulses, obviously. Um, but you're right. Maybe maybe there were some Cellini princes back in the day that had that. I honestly, I don't know enough about when those. You're checking your still. your pulse for a pulsometer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need some coffee, my friend. <laughs> uh, Jordan Kraus is asking, which new paddocks do you consider, would you consider wearing as a daily? Um, so, I mean, Zach, you can, you should speak to this. A you, new paddock for a daily. Well, I mean, you, you've got your 3919, which you basically daily. I mean, I wear a suit and tie every day. Right, true. But, like, the 3919 is just... I think it depends on, on what, depends you're, what, you what you're doing. Yeah. Right. Um, but, you know, for Kyle Travis, like, you could easily... No matter what you do, no matter as long as you're not doing manual labor or something, you know, if you wear, you can wear with a suit, or if you're literally going to work at a startup in a t-shirt, like mm -hmm. a Calatrava is not out of place. It's no, it's it's again, it's like it's an an inherently simple design. Like yours has got some hobnail going on, but mm -hmm. other than that, it's a classic white dial with some Romans and that mm -hmm. hobnail, and like you can do whatever you want with it. You know, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, dress it up, dress, dress yeah. it down. I would say any, any Calatrava pretty much, you know, yeah. you can, you can daily, you can daily anything. I don't even, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, some people don't like to take their watches off. Um, what do you mean? You know, like going in the shower. Oh God. I like, find clients that are like, do you think I could take this, you know, chronograph in the shower? I'm like, yeah, you probably shouldn't. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> but like buy a G-Shock for yeah, that, you know, G-Shock. Yeah. But yeah, everyday pack. I mean, you can daily whatever you like. Exactly. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, all right. Next up, we are going. Hold on. Let me get my notes here. We're going twenty-five to fifty k. What um? What are you going with, Zach? Or what did you go with here? So I chose the AP Audemars Piguet mm -hmm. fifteen three hundred. Nice steel. Of course. Black. I metal. think that this is the best modern AP, in my opinion. I think they nailed the proportions. Um, the only the only issue I have is what you're gonna say, Justin. What am I gonna say, Zach? It's just too thick. It is just a little bit too thick. But I agree. When it comes to modern references of the Royal Oak, beyond the sixteen two or the fifteen two hundred two, sixteen two hundred two, okay. which are perfection, you know, it just looks right. It does. Though. It does. It does. Um, Yes, this is the one that they got the closest to nailing, I think. And it is the, I mean, what is it? I'm going to look up the, the, the thickness here because I don't know off the top of my head. 
it is 9.8 millimeters thick. So it is, it is very slim by modern standards. Um, it's a great piece. So you prefer prop. Well, what are you wearing? So Justin vintage, this I thought was a 14790. It's actually a 5401. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Whoops. I know. Um, but I mean, is that a monoblock case? Is that what you prefer? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's slimmer. It's it's smaller, but I have small wrists. So that really is, is, is very, very close to perfection. I mean, if my wrist was a little bit bigger, I would totally go with that, you know, for, for a Royal Oak. Um, if I couldn't have a, you know, 15202, you know. Sure. The only thing I don't love about that one is the butterfly clasp. It's... I don't know. There's just something's nice about like the old style fold Agreed. the old cool. style foldovers. Um, it's just a little bit bulky. It, it's like you know they they put all this work into designing you know a really elegant interpretation of of the royal oak, and then they kind of just added this like big. It's it's bulky. almost slightly generic. Yeah, and yeah. I think well they still do have this this AP. Yeah, which is neat. Um, but I I agree. it just stacks up a little yeah. bit on itself. You know, a little bit too much. Um, you know, these are what in the mid thirties, usually yeah. 35 ish something like that. Um, so, you know, for when you're comparing it to, you know, again, a 15202, which is, you know, double the price, you know, that's at least, um, value proposition <laughs> sack. You're all, all over the, all val about it. All over the value all these days. No, it's really good. I mean, it, it's just such a distinctive look. Yeah. Um, LWB2017 says he wanted to make a purchase on our eBay page, sent messages that were never responded to. Um, shoot us an email, my friend. Shoot us an email to sales at europeanwatch.com. Anytime you want to, you know, you want to, there's a watch that you like or, you know, you want to get in touch with us, try and reach out to us directly. We love to, you know, we're on eBay, we're on Chrono24, but, um, you know, it's it's hard to keep track of everything. So sales at europeanwatch.com is is definitely where you want to go and we'll we'll get you happy know, to help. Yeah, we're we're more than happy to help. Um oh, social media Alex said his 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 choice for a beach to night out is the Vacheron Dual Time Everest. Well, yeah, I mean, if you can get if you can get your hands on one, like hell yeah, that's an amazing watch. I absolutely love that thing. I like the Dual Time though. I like the Dual I like time their Dual Time much better than the Chrono to be honest. It's Agreed. it, it kind of has has like a little bit of like a 5712 vibe for me where it's Absolutely. just not as symmetrical and it's not as you know straightforward it's a little bit more interesting so yeah that's definitely the way that i go as well um what'd you pick i picked i'm looking i think i make sure the price is right yeah okay so i went with the 5130 um paddock 5130 world time on a bracelet i'm kind of jealous you chose it <laughs> so and it's funny you know we were talking about this you know i i love the 5130 but this watch is all about the bracelet like it's it's a great piece on an on an alligator strap but it's like exponentially better on the bracelet and to get it under 50k is is wild um let me pull up the details on this guy talk really about bracelets quick. that don't pull your hair for whatever reason yeah this is just like so, so buttery comfortable, comfortable so right. comfortable um so this we have listed for 47.4 so i'm right up against that 50k limit there but you know again this is this is a paddock world timer white gold on a full white gold bracelet for under 50k so when you look at you know other things that are available in that 50k range you know and then i I look at this and what this offers. It's like, what? What am I even doing? Like, how is this still sitting here? It's it's so much watch for the money. Agreed. You know, I I really like the platinum version of this watch. You know, because it has that blue central guilloche as opposed to the black on the white gold. Agreed. But they don't make a platinum bracelet, or I've never. I maybe they made some one offs or things. I but you like the blue. The blue is the so center. nice. Yeah. The blue is so nice. It's a little bit more. It just pops more. But this on the bracelet is incredible. It's. And, you know, again, like you can show off, show off the action, uh -huh. um, you know, just adjusting the, the time ring, like it's this very snappy. Yeah. It's super satisfying. And I love just watching everything, you know, the hour hand, you know, that big observatory style hand, you know, snapping into place. And then, you know, you have the, 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 the twin rings spinning and everything. So it's, 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 it's awesome. I would love to own a paddock world time at some point. Um, and I, I think you can take the bracelets off these so what which reference can you and can you you so you can take it off but you can't swap a strap onto this because it has the um i believe let me see real quick what we got because this 
I'm yeah. Like, he's in the no, no. 50, 30, six. No, because this has the, the central like prong there yeah. that is attached to the case. Yeah. So it's got that, that end link that is actually fixed in place yeah. so you can't. Yeah. But who cares? Like I would never take this off of a this off of the bracelet. It's, it's, it's so cool. good. Um I want I actually want to look real quick. Because off the top of my head, I don't know, you know, a normal white gold on a strap is generally, yeah, it's closer to 40. Um, but, I mean, come on, for for $7,500 more to get the full bracelet, like, it just totally changes the watch. I agree. I love, I love this piece. I, I hope someone buys it soon because it's, uh, it's tempting as well. It, this is a personal grail, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's a solid one. And it's, it's, it's attainable, too, you know? Okay. Like, yeah, exactly. It's another one that, you know, I, for, I don't even know why, really, but for whatever reason, it, it doesn't get, you know, the love that a lot of other references, um, you know, get. So, I don't know. I love that watch. That's a great one. Um, a Costa Valdez asks, which is the better diver, sub or 50 fathoms, not factoring value retention? So, it's a great question. It is a good question. It's... They're two completely different watches. Yeah. Even though they're they're both dive watches, I think the Rolex is always going to be more utilitarian versus the 50 Fathoms is like a more luxurious timepiece. It's like, uh, um, I don't know, you're getting... It's up. interesting. Even finishing, it's, it's just completely different in my opinion. Yeah, it is totally different. I mean, I think you'd have to compare probably the, you know, the Bathyscaphe to, to the, uh, to, you know, a standard sub. Um... And you're right. It's just it's a totally different feel. You know, the bath is, or the 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 Blanc Pond is going to feel dressier, mm -hmm. or not not dressier, but it's going to feel more like so. a high end watch as opposed yeah, to a so. Rolex, which feels more like a tool. So I guess it depends on kind of what you're doing with it. Um, if I was choosing, I'm going to go with the sub. Um, unless I mean, I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm for modern modern you know modern versions of the watch. I'm going to go with the sub. Um, if we're talking vintage, I might go with oh. vintage fifty fathoms because they're no question. The best. They're yeah. they're so cool. Um, and it well, I can I can cosplay as Jacques Cousteau, you know. So <laughs> um, better subjective though. I mean, they're both great watches. I I think the sub is yeah. probably more versatile. Definitely. But yeah. there's there's way more options when it comes to the Blanc Pond. Definitely. You can do like there's every metal. Not not that the sub doesn't come in multiple metals as well, but like I feel like the Blanc Pond feels so different. Whereas, no matter what metal you're getting a sub in, unless you're getting like a yellow gold black dial, yeah. they feel exactly the same, yeah. for better or for worse, you know. So, um, yeah, nice. All right, fifty k and above. Fifty k to a hundred thousand actually now. I chose something a little wacky here. Oh yeah, you did. That's right. Yeah, I chose. So like, <laughs> this is more than a little wacky, Zach. <laughs> very wacky. And usually, like, I'm surprised I even chose this. Yeah, this is not. But it's the Urwerk Ultraviolet. And I'm gonna be completely honest with the audience. I have no idea how this works. <laughs> like I, I love it. but I like, love it. here's the thing. <laughs> At this price point, if you own this watch you probably have quite a few pieces in your collection. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, you can just have some fun with this. Yeah, I mean, it's this, so you're right. Different. Like, this is nobody's one watch. If, exactly. If you're out there and you're watching and you only have an Urwerk, like, please, like, should it drop, drop, drop us a message because I want to meet you. You sound very interesting. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, you're right. Like, if you have six, seven watches and you want something just totally out there, like, well, how much further out there can you get than than an Urwerk? You know exactly. I think it's such like a novel design. So 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 this has so you mentioned it. So it's an, an orbital satellite display with wandering hours. So pull that crown out and just show people kind of how yeah slowly how it goes around. So you have you know down at down at six o'clock you have the hour um, here and we'll watch it flip. There you go with and you have that kind of like fluorescent green arrow that's pointing to the minute. And you're actually moving it in reverse right now, which is fine. But um, so, you know, the those hours flip around, you know, it's you can also I'm trying to remember the specifics, but you can calculate. I want to say it's the distance the Earth <laughs> yeah. travels on its path around the sun over a given like a, a specific interval of time, which. I mean, who doesn't need to know that, right? Uh, for in, sure. In your day to sure. in your day to day. If I own this. I would literally never set the time. It's it just, would just be on the wrist. It's cool to watch. Like you know, who else tells 
time this way. Like other than you know an AP. Um, uh, uh, Star uh, Wheel. Thank you, Star Wheel. Yeah. There's really not a whole lot else. Oh, out get there. that rope. Yeah, it's wild. I'm trying to let me get the um the, the materials real quick because it is so ba, 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 titanium case, P, like purple. I don't know if yeah you can see the case actually has a purple hue as well. So purple PVD coating, really dark. Um, you know that automatic work movement. Um, with that wild like cross drilled rotor, like. Totally, totally crazy. And I'm trying to see what the material of the actual rotor is because it, yeah, I don't even know. But just a wild, a wild piece. And this is, this is, you went, you went low on this, a 54 I, I did, so like, I did go low. I like just looking for something totally wild though. Um, we've seen that on, I'm, I'm trying to remember the last time we had it, it was on like a white rubber strap it and it was bonkers. Like this is much, not that an Urwerk is ever going to be subtle. Like, what I also impressive is how it wears. Yeah. And so I don't know who I was recently speaking with, but this is Hold the on. this is the only Urwerk that is comfortable for me is comfortable on the wrist. And it for feels sure. like an you know, e even even with the um, the amount of like horological wackiness that's going on, it still feels like a normal watch. Kind of feels like a normal yeah, watch. Yeah, it wears pretty standard. I mean, not that dimensions really matter on this piece, but it's 41 by 49-ish, um, you know, top to bottom, 49 and a half, 41 millimeters wide. But it's so slim, it like, it, it just hugs the wrist really nicely. I could never wear, I could never no. wear it. Like, what, how do you wear that? Like... <laughs> Maybe that's maybe that's your uh, beach, your your, your beach beach club watch. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. I, I agree. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, super super cool. And again, no one else is doing. Yeah. Nobody's doing anything like this. So kudos to Erwer because this impresses me. And I'm not so much of an independent guy, but I love. It. But yeah, they're fun. They're 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 a ton of fun. Um, With a smile on my face. Which honestly, dude, like the longer we do this. The funkier you know stuff needs to be to like to 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 get me interested and like get me excited about something. I think before I I, I worked here, I, I was doing a a deal on a Grand Seiko with you. Yeah. You were wearing your cloche. Yeah. And you were like, the longer I work here, man, the you know the crazier the stuff. Yeah. yeah that exact. It's one. it's such a weird yeah. feeling, but like yeah, it really has to be funky to get your juices flowing at this point. You know what I mean? So, um, good choice. I like that one a lot. Um, so for my 50 to 100, um, I went Datagraph. I, I absolutely love the Longa Datagraph. Um, this one, this one I don't think is available yet. Let me pull it up on our site real quick. Um, nope. So this isn't, this is a super early one. Um, this is a, a, a meter dial. So normally, you know, you don't, there you go up at, you get the base 1,000 meter um, on the scale there, so that's 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 a uh, you know a, a hallmark of the early pieces. Um, this is yeah. I think the big day complication is is one of the most underrated complications. I mean, I love it. I mean, Longa does it. It's it's their distinctive yeah. feature, you know. And and I've said it a million times, but like if I owned a datagraph, I would. Like half the time I wear it flipped over on my wrist, so I can just look at the movement. It's so gorgeous. I don't think, you know, outside of, you know, a paddock grand comp, you know, some kind of minute repeater or something like that, you know, I really don't think there's a better looking movement. You know, just the, the engraved balance cock, uh, you know, on the far left side of the, of the, of the, uh, the screen right now with that blued, you know, that blued screw there. Like the finishing is gorgeous. The depth that you get in that movement mm -hmm. is, is wild. You know, and obviously, you know, Longa, you know, the datagraph, they, they, they made it quite thick. So, you know, they have plenty of room to kind of play around with. You know, it's 13 mil thick. But I don't know. It's just, it's perfect. I absolutely love that piece. What's, uh, what are you, what are you giggling about over there, David? One thirty. I think this is probably a grail piece for me. I really, at okay. some point, want to have a datagraph in my collection. I've never owned a longa. Um, Real? Yeah. No. It's. I don't know. Like I'm. I'm not super interested in just say an eighteen fifteen or yeah, you know a Saxonia or something like that. Um, 
but the dado is just perfect. You know, 39 mil, it's thick, but it's really, really nice. How are secondary market prices compared to retail? The data Ooh. graph versus so the retail I mean, on most longa, we're below, we're way below. I mean, yeah. so that being said, so so longa MSRPs are crazy. They've I mean, they increased them by I want to say it was like almost 30 percent over the past year. Um, yeah. and you know, they're they've kind of made a decision decision to really control the flow of their inventory um, and be very selective on who is getting pieces, who is getting the high-end pieces, you know, making sure that clients are developing a relationship and, you know, um, have a real, uh, like, a long track record before they're awarded these, like, really special pieces, um, which, you know, whatever, I guess you got to do what you got to do to keep the brand, you know, rolling along. But, um I'm going to look right now, actually, and see what the... I don't know what the retail on a dado is these days. Um, but I would... I mean, I'm, I'm like, 99.9% .9 sure that we are under retail at this point on on a, on a dado. Um, actually, anybody in the chat, anybody know? Anybody, anybody know what the retail on a dado is these days? We don't... Retail really pricing is so irrelevant I know. to us. It really doesn't matter. I mean, we look to see what the market is, you know, supporting, and that's what we yeah. go with, but... Um, 72,000. No, really? Yeah. That's shocking, actually. I would have guessed it was much closer to 100. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, for, you know, for, for the 50 to 100 price point, I don't know. I just, I don't think I, I could do any better than a dado. I absolutely love it. It's, it's just a special piece. It's got so much, so much, like, feeling and i love the history of it you know um the development of it you know uh longa basically kind of like kicked the rest of the industry in the pants you know when they developed it because no one was using in-house movements in-house chronograph movements um and longa said nope we're gonna do everything in-house um and they kind of started we just lost that camera um they kind of started that you know that initial push you know 20 plus years ago now for all the brands to be you know like chasing after um you know in-house movements you know and, and honestly i i don't necessarily think it's all that important or I, I don't think it's as important as some people make it out to be these days you know what i mean like i love it a, depends on the price point i love a good paddock with a lamani like a 5170 with a lamani movement in it like come on sure. how do you do better than that but um let's see the sub dials that like yeah breezy kind of it's almost gold it has like yeah. a, almost like a gold hue to it it's awesome it's gorgeous. it is gorgeous, and it's one of the few big longas that actually wears nicely on my wrist. Like a Zeitwerk or like a Terra Luna or anything like that is just like absurd. Even honestly, this actually wears better than just like a standard longa one for me for some reason too. Hmm. There, it's thick. I don't know if it's the way the like lugs kind of wrap the wrist. And it's maybe. thicker. It you know obviously the data was thicker than just a longa one. Um, so I don't know if it's just like it feels more balanced on my wrist or whatever it is. Yeah. But I don't know. I could it could be it could all be in my head as well. Who knows? Um, Everything's just in your head, Jeff. Yeah. Well, that's true, Zach. There's a lot going on. <laughs> David Cash says not seventy anymore, and I I, I agree. Um, yeah, Cosmo, <laughs> Craig. Wow, producer Craig, way wrong. Everybody. That's what why everybody. That everybody. <laughs> That's what watch chart said. It was out of date. It was a little out of date. Watch uh, was watch, a out of date. watch small G says 127k, and I would tend to believe that retail. Yeah. Oh we, my god. I know. So on my, you know, my my desk computer, I have the the price list that the the Craigslist uh, mm -hmm. of uh, of Longa prices. Not not this Craig, the good Craig. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and I'll have to double check that. But yeah, I I definitely thought it was well over 100. Um, a Costa Valdez says, as for the Trinity, why doesn't Vacheron hold the same value retention or recognition as AP or Paddock? Um, that's a great, it question. is a good question. I think honestly, because Vacheron, modern Vacheron, you know, like within the past 10, 15 years, I don't think they've done as many kind of not iconic, but they haven't done as many like successful quality pieces as either AP or Paddock has mm -hmm. done. Um, you know, I struggle to think of beyond the overseas, you know, up until like, like innovation until, wise. I mean, just, yeah, kind of, I mean, but like, you know, even just new models, new, new, like compelling models, the two, sure. two, the two, 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 obviously super compelling. That's you a know, reissue. Though. That's a reissue. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but like, I think about Vacheron from the nineties and we actually, we talked about this last week, you know, there are, um, like the 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 perpetual calendar minute repeater, I think it's like the three four four eight or something like that. The I don't remember. I'll tell me the reference. But um, you know, there there are these crazy 
complicated grand comp models from the 90s mm -hmm. that you know sell at like a you know if it was a paddock they would be like a 3x price right. so you know um i don't know i honestly i don't really know for sure why um marketing well, like, budget. i was gonna say marketing as well pa you know p rolex and, well, and patek spend a lot of money on marketing where you don't see many vasher on ads paddock also has the history of you know you you never own a paddock you you only you know take care of it for the next generation there's there's so much like there's what's their tagline vacheron yeah. oh man yeah, was it it was no, like it's not, it's not, not, not many, many or something yeah, like, like that like who the heck came, came up, up with that it's so bad so i don't know it's 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 one of those one of those brands who you can actually find some good deals on yeah. on some you know oh, really the, interesting um, pieces we got in a skeletonized um time only piece i believe vacheron it was Did amazing we? yeah their skeleton yeah, outfits are, are incredible um the because they do like incredible decoration yeah. on every single component so yeah, i looped it it was like unbelievable the beveling and so like that sort of stuff impresses me but yeah maybe it's just a lack of innovation maybe i don't know um all right we have five minutes left let's wrap it up with our uh 100k plus watches sure go for it so i chose the 5270g mm -hmm. Perpetual calendar chronograph yep. from Patek Philippe. I mean, signature complication, you know, from from Paddock. When I, think, mind movement. when I think Paddock, when I think Paddock Grand Comp, I kind of, I think either 5970, 3970, or, you know, modern, in, 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 you know, modern 5270. Um, I honestly think that this is the most wearable Grand Comp, period. Not even from, you know, from anybody. Like, you could daily, you could easily daily that watch if, you know, you had the cash, like mm -hmm. wear that every single day, no matter what. Again, like we were saying, t-shirt, maybe not to the beach, not to the beach but, you know. I mean, if you had enough money, anything's possible. That's true, that's true. Beach. But I just think it's, it's so easy. It's such a beautiful watch. It's such an, you know, a great design. It's the right size, the right proportions. Um, is Her this deco kind of is this the first series sack? Yeah, this this yeah, is the this first is the series. series yep. So you can tell again the 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 charcoal hands um, and and indices, which that I, means there's no chin at at six o'clock is it's called right? There's no chin on this, correct? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, the chin is for, for if you don't know if you look at the the bottom of the date um, indicator there, yeah, where Zach's finger is, kind of steps into the minute track. on the chin ones. It yeah. does, yeah. It's kind of a funky look. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I could, I wouldn't complain if, you know, I don't really even care which one. Um, but yeah, this is an incredible piece. So do you, is this just the one that we have in stock right now? Or do you prefer the white gold silver dial? Because there's every, you know, I think it was a matter of what we had in stock. Okay. If, I, if I you had to prefer choose. a colored metal. So like, hmm. so would you go yellow gold or rose Maybe. or something? I love yellow. With yellow gold. gold. Um, I, it's rare, but I really, really like yeah. it. I also love the white gold blue dial. That's probably my favorite. Um, yeah, awesome choice. That is that is an incredible watch. That is what, what, 130 ish, probably, price range? I forget. Yeah, honestly, look right now, real quick. Also, a good comparison would be these two movements. What do you got? The dado? Yeah, the dado graph. show kind of yeah see if you can kind of get that there you go yeah i mean both beautifully decorated obviously you know the the data's got a lot of a uh, lot less going on than the um than the paddock i still honestly think that the the, the dado is a prettier movement um okay but yeah so that's 132.5 so that's 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 a good choice i like that a lot um wrapping it up real quick two minutes left um Go ahead and show that bad boy off. I want the Vagabondage. Uh, again, I am... What did you just say? The Vagabondage. <laughs> One of 69 very sexy pieces. Um, I love non-traditional, you know, non-round cases. So this is Jorn's Tortue case. Flat Tortue. Um, and the, the story on this one... Which I didn't even know until recently. It makes it that, like, even, even more special for me. So they... Apparently for a cherry auction, they designed, you know, a one-off piece with this flat tortue case. Um, and the, the reaction was so positive that they said, okay, we're going to do um, a small run of, of, um, of these pieces, you know, for 
for our like devoted collectors essentially. And here, show, so pull that crown out and just advance the time so people can see kind of how that works. But um, so this is the only Jorn ever made that it doesn't say Jorn on the dial anywhere, um, which I kind of love about it. It's, you know, only when you flip it over, do you see the invented at Feckett and, you know, the, the, um, the, the brand and everything. Um, so, you know, you have, you know, jumping hours, jumping minutes. Um, this is the Vagamondage 2. Um, so, you know, the 3 is my absolute favorite, but we don't, we don't have one right now. But that you get jumping hours, minutes, and it was the first watch ever produced with jump, or first wristwatch with jumping seconds as well. Mm. Um, so just, you know, leave it to Jorn to make something like totally, you know, out of the blue, esoteric. No one asked for it, but he was like, I'm going to make this anyways. I really, I just want to make this. Uh, I like it. So, you know, this is, you know, well into like the, approaching a quarter million dollars so you know totally unobtainable i'll never I'll, I'll never own one but i love to get to you know see it handle it you know throw it on my wrist every once in a while and pretend like it's mine um it's i don't know it's just it's 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 unusual it's totally out there um that that smoked sapphire dial um again no one no one does anything like that so i'm uh yeah, i'm a, I'm a fan. plate it's just so good yeah and it's another one like it's it, it, it just wears nicely you know it's it's flat it's small it's very very interesting so um any final thoughts zach before we wrap up i think we did a great job oh if wait you, if actually you team, so yourself team, whose do you prefer which uh um is rob still on rob who knows if rob's on i hope rob's on i prefer <laughs> the patek versus this vagabondage, the vagabondage three is just out of the think It is. It's insane. It's just it's insane. I would the choose best. that over it. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. The I think he was saying Rob or him. Or him. Oh, Adam, like which one? Do I prefer? Do I prefer yeah, we're saying who, like Rob or him. That's oh, like, that was the oh, really is that word. <laughs> no, 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 no. I meant like Steve Rob. He's in, trying in, to in the, in the chat. Who do you prefer? Today's choice. No, no, no. He tried to Rob Joe. No, Rob is much better. Um. Anyways. Rob, I hope you're still there, buddy. We missed you. Um, feel better, buddy. Yeah, you feel better. We um, thank you guys very much for joining us. Um, this was fun. You know, we we're we're, we're trying to stay, keep things creative. And uh, if you guys have any ideas of things we should talk about or focus on, let us know. Um, I'm actually going to be be away next week, so Zach, you might you might uh, you might get pulled off the bench again. We'll see. But um, yeah. Anyways, thanks for joining, guys. Happy thank holidays, you. and uh, we'll see you again soon. See you later. Bye.